Hi everybody. Very often when we shoot portraits, uh, we don't have a lot of control about the lighting um, and the people, of course, we're shooting. Um, very rarely can we actually work with people who've had a professional hair and makeup job on. So, you know, they're just regular people. And uh, if we're in a bright sunny place or if we used a little bit of speed light either from the pop-up flash or an accessory speed light, we may find that we're getting a little bit of a uh, flash reflection. Now, in this portrait of my friend here, she's, uh, she's pretty good. It's in the shade, but we're picking up a little bit of moisture around the eyes and of course that looks like a bit of a sparkle it's almost as if she's got that sort of artificial makeup sparkle on so I'm just going to show you how to retouch that out as well she has a number of sort of natural moles on her face so I might just take the opportunity to remove some of those using this excellent tool called the spot healing brush spot healing brush is named thus for a very good reason I can just do all this kind of stuff very very quickly in order to show you I'm going to duplicate the layer and I'm just going to take a few of these out now Hopefully we're going to do a very good job here. It's not actually working terribly, terribly well. So we need to think about how this works a little bit better. So it says proximity match, create texture, or content aware. Let's try content aware because otherwise it looks like somebody's... <gasps> Look how cool that is. So content aware kind of wakes the program up and says, Look, hey, buddy, uh, check this out because we're putting, you know, some retouching job in a darker area of the, pa of the face. Do not make it go lighter and vice versa. So very quickly, you know, you can remove a lot of the little blemishes. You do have to be really careful about this, though, because people are going to look at that and go, oh, there's Hiromi. Oh, hang on a minute. Where's all the moles gone? You know, so sometimes facial blemishes, as we call them facial blemishes, you know, like this mole to the left of her right eye here. Um, you know, if I took that out, something like that, you know, great. She's probably going to love it. She probably thinks that, you know, she'd like to get rid of it at some stage. But we all do not recognize that that is Hiromi to us because she has that mark on her face. So basically don't remove all the blemishes. But what I was going to do is show you how we can get rid of some of this. And it's very simple. I'm using again the spot healing brush. I'm just going to rub it over the eye where there's sort of slight moisture and reflection is coming in. So that obviously makes an absolute dog's breakfast about the whole thing because it's content aware and because as you saw I was kind of rubbing the brush all the way up to the eyebrow and down to the eyelid and that sort of thing. It copies a bit of everything into it. So it makes an absolute mess. How do we fix it? Well, the best way to do again is duplicate the layer again just in case things go pear-shaped. And we can use just the regular healing brush. And the reason I'm doing that is because the healing brush is brilliant. It allows me to select, much in the same way that I would if I was using the clone brush, a certain part of the skin. If I was in spot healing brush mode, and there's certainly content aware, it kind of looks around the outside of the brush for stuff, texture, brightness and colour to fill in. And as you can see here, it's copied some of the texture of the eyebrow in there, which ain't very good. So we use the healing brush and we hold the Alt or the Option key down to get the target and click once. And so what I've done is said, look, hey, that's the area of skin I want to copy with. And you can see it's kind of bringing some skin with me now with the cursor. So the weird thing is, of course, it's kind of a different color. It's a different brightness and probably a different texture. But when I let go, it blends it in almost seamlessly. And let's just try that. Again. And what we're looking to do is deaden down some of that reflectivity. I don't want to take it away completely because otherwise then the face will just go flat. Let's just pan out and have a look and see what that looks like. So that's before, that's afterwards. It's very subtle. And again, if I had a little bit more time, I don't want to bore you with hours and hours of retouching, but you get the idea. We're using the healing brush. We've selected some clean skin in inverted commas. Let's just go up to the forehead here and just Alt, Option, click up there. And then we're just going to paint in down here. And I'll just see if I can go into a very small. So the cool thing about this brush is you don't have to look at how different that, that is. Look at the color difference. You don't have to select the same color. It blends it in perfectly. Now, the reason that's gone a bit weird is because it's now affected, or it's taken, some of the eyebrow. Okay. So I need to get out of uh, the setting here. So we've got clone overlay, normal, sample, aligned. Okay. What I'm going to do now is turn to my third retouching tool, which is the Clone Stamp Tool. Clone Stamp Tool works exactly the same, pretty much, as the Healing Brush. I have to Alt-click on a good area. Okay, and again, this is very literal. It takes some of that color and pastes it. All right. Now, the problem with this tool, of course, is it pastes the color. It doesn't blend it. So I actually need to find some color that's almost identical. So I'm going to go a bit closer and choose some of the upper eye area and just run it over there. And don't forget, it's probably better 
to work at a very low opacity, which means I've got to scrub backwards and forwards a few times. But as you build it up, you can realize that you're just dulling down some of that, whoops, some of that reflectivity. There you go. And that's all we need to do. We don't necessarily want to remove all this stuff entirely. I'm just kind of smothering it. I'm just covering it over a little bit. There we go. Tiny little. So I'm using the same colored, pretty much the same colored pixels from an adjacent area. OK, and I'm just dulling it down a little bit. That's all we need to do. There we go. And she's pretty good on the, on the right-hand side, but just on the left-hand side. So again, this is previous, and that's the new version. So it just looks a little bit flatter. I need to go in here and just fix up one of my earlier mistakes, one of my many earlier mistakes. There we go. So it's a combination of healing brush or spot healing brush. Spot healing brush is perfect for isolated spots like pimples, freckles, moles, that kind of thing. The healing brush is a little bit more specific, but do remember it does do an amazing amount of smoothing and blending. So adjacent areas can cause a few problems. And finally, the clone stamp tool is fantastic because that allows me to get in there. Let's just show you the previous. allows me to get in there very specifically, but of course it copies the color texture and density of the skin so you have to find skin that is a similar look so that's the original photo there she is and that's the new version original photo new version looking at it a second time now I think just in the upper left hand portion of the left eyebrow as we're looking at it again needs a little bit more attention but you can get the idea that in a matter of minutes you can transform a portrait of somebody that you uh, you know very fond of, that you know that's part of your family or a group of friends, and you think, I can just take a few of those little bit of blemishes out, make them look fantastic. Always, 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 as a big tip, always leave a few little pimples or a few little marks, because if you remove everything, it's no longer them. You also kind of remove the personality. We know this girl because of her mole hit. That's a familiar facial mark on her on her eye, just in the lower eye area. So I'm going to leave that in. If you remove everything, it's just going to look a little bit less believable.